Hi, I'm Bobby Trice on staff at FCNL. And I'm Deb Hale, a member of FCNL's General Committee representing Philadelphia Yearly Meeting. And today we're talking about how the true power of lobbying is in our personal stories. Speaking truth to power has always been a part of Quaker practice. As friends, we have prophetic messages of change to bring to our members of Congress. Let's dive in. As constituent lobbyists, our stories are the power we have when we talk to a congressional office. You do not have to be a policy expert in order to be an effective lobbyist. Not even members of Congress are experts in all types of policy. They rely on staffers to brief them and advocates like us to tell them what is happening in the communities that they represent. Our stories help to make the problems with the status quo real for legislators who are overwhelmed with numbers and statistics. Now, you might be wondering what we mean by story. Your story for lobby visits during annual meeting is basically the answer to this question. Why do you care about police reform? And I want to encourage you all to be creative. A story does not have to be an experience that impacted you or your community directly. It can also relate to your faith, values, and the urgency of the issue. Deb, will you get us started by telling us about your story? Sure. Um, my story is an example um, that is not about personal impact, but rather the urgency I feel related to the need for police reform and what compelled me to care about this issue. I want to share how my story might sound if I shared it in a congressional office, because the important thing is to always bring it back to the ask when you are actually lobbying. So here we go. The murder of George Floyd and the outpouring of support for the Black Lives Matter movement was very moving for me. My quarterly meeting put out a minute asking all monthly meetings to hold a special vigil in June. Gwynedd Monthly Meeting already schedules weekly vigils at our busy corner in town. I was moved to participate, even though this was two months into the pandemic. Up until that time, I had not ventured out of the house, except for every other week trips to the grocery store. I had not even visited my children and grandchildren who live in the area. I was so glad to be there. About 100 people showed up. We practiced social distancing, held up our signs to many honks and thumbs up from passing cars. The friend's testimony on peace and equality moved me to this witness, recognizing that there is no peace without justice in that there is that of God in every person. Our advocacy to demilitarize the police definitely grows out of my faith. Now notice that I did not mention many numbers or figures. I did this on purpose to show that you really can lobby with an emphasis on your story as opposed to anything else. This does not mean that you should exclude all the facts and talking points you hear at an annual meeting. Please do so. But don't be nervous if you forget something. That's also why we have a leave behind with more detailed information that you can all send to your congressional offices after you lobby. I will now hand it back over to Bobby so that he can model another type of story. Yeah, thanks, Deb. I'll be sharing a brief story to demonstrate the amount of time you might have to share your story in a lobby visit. You'll hear me explain my personal impact, and then I will immediately float into the ask. We would really like you to share your story and bring it back to the ask at the end to make your lobbying as impactful as possible. So here we go. America needed police reform before May 25th, 2020, when George Floyd was killed when a police officer knelt on his neck for more than eight minutes. America needed police reform before June 1st, 2020, when I was tear gassed and shot with rubber bullets while exercising my First Amendment rights as a peaceful demonstrator in Lafayette Square outside the White House. America needs police reform now. As a Quaker and a social worker, I believe in a peaceful world free from violent policing. No one should be afraid of the people sworn to serve and protect them. 
As we reckon with the harsh realities of racism and police violence, we must recognize that unaccountable, militarized American police forces are a threat to our communities and to democracy. In 2019, 54% of those who died as a result of harm from police were people of color. We cannot give up on this push for police reform due to partisan politics. The House has taken a good first step by approving the Justice and Policing Act, HR 7120. I urge senators to pass the Senate Companion, S3912, or legislation that includes the same four provisions, limiting the 1033 program, banning chokeholds and no-knock warrants, raising the use of force standard, and prohibiting discriminatory profiling. Much more needs to be done, but this legislation is a good first step towards transforming policing. Do you see how I included the ask, my personal story and values, and some facts to get my message across? Here are three different ways you can approach your story. First, it could be a story that connects with your identity. For example, as a young person, as a student, as a Quaker or person of faith, as a person of color, etc. It could be a story that reflects the need to advocate at this moment. For example, the urgency of police reform, how police continue to murder black and brown people and commit acts of violence on the general population. Or it could be a story that highlights the benefits of police reform. There are so many different ways that you can approach your story and bring your message to members of Congress. So we can't wait to see you online and hear your stories at FCNL's annual meeting in Quaker Public Policy Institute, November 14th through the 17th. Remember, Congress won't act on police reform unless they hear from us.